Hello there, Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of seven books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today I want to talk about the neuroscience of influence. You know, I think we all want to be influential. We want to be able to talk to people in a way where they hear what we have to say as valuable. I think a lot of people get into the trap of then trying to convince the other person of the value of what they're saying. They kind of line up their facts, they line up their arguments. If they hear someone say something, they kind of talk about how that's not right and how this is right, and it becomes a debate. Matter of fact, I've had people say, hey, Bill, well, you know, conversations when people have differences, just like it ought to be debates, you know. I'll say one thing, they'll say another, and whoever makes the most sense wins. Well, if you think about a debate, people aren't actually trying to convince the other debater. They're trying to convince a judge or a panel or a jury. They're trying to convince a third party. So let me ask you, whenever anyone is trying to convince you, do you find yourself kind of leaning forward and really looking forward to understanding their perspective? And no, <laughs> you feel a little put upon. You know, that's why confrontation generally doesn't work. When you confront someone, they generally don't see that as valuable, and that has to do with how the brain processes information. That's why I call this the neuroscience of influence. So, for those of you who follow my life from the top of the line philosophy, you know we got these basically three parts to the brain. Lower part of the brain is called the brain stem. This is where fight or flight happens. Middle part of the brain is called the, it's called the limbic system. This is the scanner, processor, router part of the brain. This is where data comes first. The upper 80% of the brain, what I call the top of the mind, is called the neocortex. This is where we have access to our interpersonal skills, problem-solving skills, clarity, confidence, creativity, compassion, and I believe influence. So here's what often happens. When we're trying to convince someone of the righteousness of our perspective, or trying to imply that their perspective is flawed in some ways. That actually sends them deeper into their resistant brain. They become more resistant because their limbic system interprets us as dangerous or a threat in some ways. Now, we're not. We're a nice person just trying to get our point across. But this part of the brain has a tendency to interpret anything negative or, 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 or uh, anything, well, frankly, anything negative as dangerous and therefore sends the person to that part of the brain that's designed to deal with danger. But the problem is when we try to confront someone or convince them of the righteousness of our perspective and they go to the resistant brain, they actually hear less of what we're saying. They certainly don't value what we're saying. So there's several things I think we want to do in order to be more influential with people. The first thing we want to ask ourselves is what's important to that person? What are they concerned about? Because if we can frame what we have to say in a way that, what, that what's important to them, so they hear that as valuable, so it fits with what they're concerned about, now not only does it not go down to the resistant brain, it goes up to what's called the receptive brain, the cooperative brain, the part of the brain that wants to hear what we have to say because it fits with what's important to them. Let me give you an example of that. Let's assume you're a supervisor and you're talking to an employee. And the employee really needs to change some of his or her behavior because it's kind of getting in the way of their success and could lead to their being dismissed. Well, if you come in and say, listen, if you don't change this and this and this, they'll get real defensive, either defend it or, you know, passively aggressive, smile and nod, but just go, what an idiot. I don't plan on doing any of that. If you go in, however, and say, okay, help me understand what's important to you here. And they say, well, gosh, you know, I, I really like working here. I, I want to be seen by the organization as valuable. Or you could ask that question, you know, is that really important? Do you want to be seen by the organization as valuable? If I could show you a way to influence how the organization sees you, so they would see you as the valuable employee you are, hey, would you like to know what that is? So I've just now framed their behavior change in terms of what's important to them. Yeah, I want them to be able to get their work in on time and uh, engage others in a productive way. But this is, I don't do this based on criticism. There's a quote from, I believe, Carl Jung that says, Criticism is necessary when something needs to be destroyed, but it is not productive when something needs to be built up. So, if you're a supervisor, you're wanting to bring out the best of those uh, around you. You're not trying to stop their worst so much. You're trying to bring out their best and get them motivated to cooperate with you on that, to be 
in, to be uh, enthusiastic about implementing the things you want to implement. Same thing with kids, you know, if you're talking to your teenager and you tell them, listen, you need to clean up your room and da-da-da-da and I make the rules and if you don't, you're going to get grounded by... Well, the teenager already goes into that resistant brain and hears you as controlling and unfair and not really understanding them. If you talk to them about being, you know, kind of, what if I treated you less like a child and more like an adult? Would, would that be valuable? I think most kids are going to go, yeah. Matter of fact, if I could show you a way where we could interact in a way where you would actually be able to do more things with your friends, where I would trust you more to do more things with your friends, would you, hey, would you like to know what that is? So what you're wanting them to do is make and keep adult agreements. And then, once they do that, then you're going to be able maybe to trust them in doing some things with their friends. Maybe in that little line where you, you know, you're not quite sure. If they've kept these adult agreements up to this point, you can go, okay, then I can trust that. So this is a really short version of what I go out and teach. I have my Life from the Top of the Mind philosophy. It shows people how to actually access this upper 80% of the brain in us first. Because we got to be in this clear, confident, creative part of who we are in order to engage that in others. It shows people how to stay there. I give you a model how to shift there, how to stay there. And then I show you how to engage other people in such a way that they shift from their resistant brain to their receptive brain so they actually hear and understand what you're wanting them to know. If you would like me to come to your organization and teach you and your folks how to do this, how to get everybody in the top of the mind where everyone's taking more responsibility for bringing their best to life, all you got to do is go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, or just Google Bill Crawford PhD. I'll come up on the first page. Hit the contact button and let me know what you're interested in. In the meantime, by the way, if you're liking these videos, please hit the like button. You know how YouTube and Google and Facebook all love it when you like it. Share it with your friends if you feel it would be valuable to them. I post one of these each week, so if you want to subscribe on YouTube or friend me on Facebook or I put these on LinkedIn and iTunes and Pinterest and all the folks. So if that's something you want to follow, feel free to do that Twitter. I, will be, uh, I would love to kind of connect with you on a regular basis. In the meantime, here's to you bringing more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.